In this lesson, we are learning about mutations. There's only one piece of subject matter that's specific to this, but it's an interesting topic, so I'm going to cover a little bit more. All right, we've talked a lot about how variation is created while producing new offspring in different species, uh, be it through recombination or independent assortment at meiosis, uh, or through random fertilization of gametes during sexual reproduction. But this variation will exist within families and because of it across a larger population as well. We know that variation and diversity within a population is a beneficial characteristic, uh, so we're going to further discuss how this arises at a molecular level. Now, variation can be caused by different versions of the same genes, and these are known as alleles, and we might be referring to any of our given physical traits like hair, hair colour, eye colour, whatever it is, but we also have to remember that it's also about microscopic things like the types of enzymes and proteins and, uh, that our genetic instructions produce. So the genotype is all of the genes that an individual possesses, whereas the phenotype are the things that are displayed, right? the physical features that are displayed, and any changes that lead to the variation in a gene relative to the original base sequence leads to new alleles, and this is known as mutation. Now, mutation is, an, is, is a word we usually associate with having something, you know, that is a negative connotation, but it isn't always the case. It relates to change. So it can be a change in the DNA base sequence, but it can also be changed in larger chunks of the DNA strand within a chromosome. Now, they can arise spontaneously due to DNA replication errors in S phase, due to cell division, or they can actually be induced by some kind of disturbance. And these disturbances can be physical, chemical, or biological, and they're known as mutagens. We'll be discussing changes in the DNA sequence in this uh, lesson, uh, and there'll be more on chromosome abnormalities in future lessons. Now, most mutations in the DNA base sequence are detected and corrected by enzymes during DNA replication. Now, those that don't get picked up in this manner are pretty rare, um, and they can go one of three ways. So they can be uh, leading to harmful results, they can be neutral or lead to no change, or they can actually be beneficial to an organism. Now, there are huge databases that currently exist that are added too frequently, which can help determine whether a mutation that's found in a human patient, for example, will be harmful or not. Mutations that occur during cell replication may involve a single nucleotide, or it might be many, even entire triplets can be changed. Now, a point mutation is one that involves one single nucleotide, and these can include substitutions, deletions, insertions of bases, okay? And they can occur spontaneously. As an example, um, if a chemical change occurs to an adenine base, so it now looks really similar to a cytosine base, it will no longer pair up with thymine. Instead, it will be bonding with guanine, right? And this can lead to a change in the DNA template strand, which is replicated or even turned into a polypeptide. If so, if that uh, amino acid is impacted, then the polypeptide is going to be impacted during transcription and translation. If a point mutation occurs in non-coding regions like introns, there may be absolutely no visible effect whatsoever. If a point mutation occurs in a coding region, however, this could change the DNA triplet being read during transcription, and it results in a new mRNA sequence, and then the amino acid uh, which comes from it will create a non-typical polypeptide, and this is known as a non-synonymous mutation. Now, it's possible for a point mutation to lead to no change as well, because we know that there are similar, um, sorry, there are many codons which code for the same amino acid. So, for example, if the DNA base changes from CTT to CTC, right, so this is this example that's on the screen right now, then the resultant mRNA will go from GAA to GAG, both which code for glutamine. So, this is a silent or synonymous mutation because there's no discernible difference between the original polypeptide that would have been produced and the mutant polypeptide that's produced. Now, if a point mutation occurs, um, you know, that creates a premature stop codon, then no more amino acids will be produced following along on that polypeptide chain. And this is going to stop that entire sequence from being produced. And this is called a nonsense mutation. If a base is inserted or deleted from a DNA sequence, um, this is going to change the starting point from where those bases are read meaning the entire sequence after that point of insertion or deletion will be altered. And this is known as a frame shift, and it can happen with one or a few bases, um, and it's most likely going to change the polypeptide that's produced. 